The Prism line has single-handedly taken over the best value side of things at the store, but just how good is this paddle's overall performance? Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. The Vatic Pro Prism has kind of become Pickleball's worst kept secret. The company was trying to produce a high performance paddle for under 100 US dollars, but did they actually succeed? The short answer is yes. All the paddles in the Prism line are absolutely fantastic, but then the next question is, are they actually competitive in overall performance with paddles that are almost twice as expensive? But before we answer that question, I gotta remind everybody that any of the paddles we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments section what you want me to cover next. So, the only difference between the Prisms and the standard Vatic Pros is that these paddles aren't thermoformed, they're made from the more standard molding process. But other than that, they are totally identical. That means that yes, they still have the same Torre T700 carbon top sheet, foam injected sidewalls, and the same shape and weight characteristics of their more expensive counterparts. These are all features that over a year ago we were paying over $250 for, so it's pretty impressive to see them coming in at this price point. We're going to talk about how the Prism line performs in terms of power, spin, control, touch, and sweet spot size to see if that 137 Canadian dollars price point is too good to be true. Now I've probably said this enough times on this channel, but I tend to prefer extended length paddles, so most of my playtest was with the V7, but of course, whatever I say here will also apply to the flashes. You know the drill, that hybrid shape is fantastic for maneuverability and especially that flickability. And if you do want to know a little bit more about how all the Vatic Pro shapes compare, you can go check out our Vatic Pro overview from a few weeks back. Let's get into it. We've talked about it ad nauseum on this channel, but probably the best feature of thermoforming is just how positive of an effect it has on spin. The rigidity of a thermoform paddle means that the transfer of spin potential from your swing to the paddle is much more one-to-one, -one. so unfortunately, in terms of spin generation, the prisms can't really compete with any thermoform paddle. You have to be a little more tactical about how you hit your spin shots. With a thermoform paddle, you can pretty much just hit at the ball like you would with a tennis racket. Here you kind of have to do more of a scooping motion, really letting the ball sink into the paddle bed and then brushing up on it for spin. That being said, spin is by no means bad on any of these paddles. In fact, about a year ago, I would have said it's top, top tier. Compared to other standard molded paddles, the spin potential here is some of the best I've tried. It again comes down to that Vatic core and top sheet, which is just fantastic for spin potential. They've really figured it out over there. You can still hit low dipping passing shots, really spinny serves. You'll just have to work with the paddle a little bit more rather than just kind of throwing it at the ball and letting the thermoforming do all the work. Thermoforming is great, but its biggest flaw is control and that's never going to change. You can go for a thicker thermoform paddle, but it'll never be as soft as something the same thickness standardly molded. Honestly, in terms of soft control, the prisms are just significantly better than any of Vatic's thermoform paddles. It feels kind of crazy to say that because of how much cheaper these are, but that is the sacrifice you're making when you go thermoform. So really, when you look at it objectively, what you lose in spin, you gain back in soft control. So how does that actually translate to shot selection and playability? Well, one of the reasons advanced players like thermoform paddles so much is because you can kind of get out of any sticky situation using spin, kind of like in tennis. It adds an element of skill that makes it easier to generate spin for players who naturally know how to do so. The thing is, the players who like that are usually players like me who come from a tennis background and don't love the touch side of pickleball. It doesn't come as naturally to us, so spin is our safety blanket rather than trying to neutralize or take over a point with soft control. You can do that way better with the prism. Instead of trying to hit a spinny passing shot, go for a drop shot and then take over the point at the net. Because the paddle is so much more plush, you can softly guide that drop shot into the kitchen without worrying that the ball is going to fly like it can tend to on a thermoform paddle. That added control was also fantastic for my return game. I like to kind of block slice the ball deep into my opponent's court and with a thermoform paddle, the response can sometimes be a little wild and unpredictable, not here. I just feel so much more cushion and control over the amount of depth I put on my slice return. It really is a joy to use on that shot and makes up for the slightly less power I get on serve. So basically, any of the paddles in the Prism line are fantastic for control. They're competitive with the best raw carbon fiber paddles on the market right now, with a slight caveat, and that comes in paddle feel. Feel is a bit of an intangible, but if a paddle has good feel, that means the ball and paddle bed interaction is well-defined, which means you'll feel more connected to the ball and therefore have better control. The Hyperion for me is kind of the gold standard for feel in the non-thermoform game. You just get this really nice sensation on contact, which tells you exactly where the ball is in the paddle face. I do find the feel to be slightly less premium on the Prism line. It's a little bit more hollow and raw on contact, which some people will like, but it just made it a little bit more ambiguous as to where the 
ball was in the paddle phase. I'm not as connected to the ball here as I am on something like the Hyperion, but we're really, really splitting hairs. And for less than half the price, you can't really argue with that. Stability and sweet spot size kind of go hand in hand because stability has to do with how well the paddle responds when you make contact outside the sweet spot. And the prisms have fantastic stability, but it's a little bit different to the stability on a thermoform paddle. Thermoform paddles are very stable because their rigidity means that when you make contact outside the sweet spot, there's still a lot of paddle pushback here on the sides. The prisms are more plush, so it's not necessarily the same rigid type of stability, but more so a sensation of the sweet spot expanding past what it does on more standard paddles. Basically, they just have big sweet spots. You'll come to appreciate this in the soft game because it means you still have this plush controlled response even when you're not making perfect contact, so it's very easy to get dialed in. With thermoform paddles, that stability is much more noticeable on put-away volleys and ground strokes. The prism line is noticeably more fluttery on those types of shots, but then the thermos aren't as forgiving in the soft game, so it's again another trade-off. If it's a question of which prism is the most stable, then it's the V7. It's thick and it's also the longest, so pretty logical there. Then it's the 16 millimeter flash, then the 14. I guess now is a good time to mention that thicker paddles tend to be more stable and have bigger sweet spot. It makes sense. The is thicker so there's more mass to crush the ball and it's less pingy on the outsides. Also I do think the Hyperion is kind of again the king of non-thermoform stability and I don't think these are quite up to scratch but they're very close which is extremely impressive considering the price difference. Okay, power is the other elephant in the room. It's kind of a similar story to what it was with spin, but these aren't thermoform, so in terms of power, they really can't compete with paddles that are. That's going to be totally fine for you players who naturally generate power, though. In fact, the fact that they are less powerful might mean that you're more comfortable going for big shots. I've never cared much about the power element of a thermoform paddle. It's always been their spin that has drawn me to them. If it weren't for their obscene spin potential, I probably wouldn't play with thermoform paddles because I just have too hard of a time controlling that more power powerful launch. So it's probably a good thing that these are slightly lower powered, considering their slightly lower spin. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that power is more so a luxury rather than a necessity, but it is kind of nice to have that extra pop on serves and put away volleys. You definitely won't be limited with these, but if you do want a bit more pop, just add some lead tape. It'll help you drive through the ball a little bit more, especially on putaways. Let's just pretend for a second that we live in this magical world where price doesn't exist and all paddles cost the same. Would any serious pickleball player choose these? Absolutely, that's how good they are. I've made reference to this several times throughout this review, but it's definitely not that the Prism's overall performance is somehow worse than their most expensive siblings. It's just different, and finding which one works better for you is key in picking one over the other. If you value soft touch and control over top end spin and power, these are not just going to be better value, they're just straight up going to be better for you than the Thermoform Vatics. And honestly, it doesn't really stop there, because if you haven't actually played with a Thermoform paddle yet, you won't feel that these lack any spin or power, because compared to any paddle that came out before 2023, they would be up there with the best. So basically, for 137 Canadian dollars, you have a truly top tier raw carbon fiber paddle that has most of, if not all of the playability of paddles that about a year ago we were paying over $300 for. Yeah. Vatic Pro has kind of broken pickleball with these. The only players who won't at least want to give these a shot are players who have become totally used to the playability of thermoform paddles. As great as these are, they simply aren't going to be as spin friendly or powerful, and if you play with thermoform paddles, you're probably used to their lackluster control. Other than that though, I'm not kidding when I say these really are for everybody. They're an absolute no-brainer for value, and the playability is so good that if you end up getting one, you're probably never gonna really want more. For now though, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for for watching and remember that if you do want to demo any of the prisms you can come visit us in store or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca